Okay, the next thing we are going to dive into is how to multiply and divide these rational expressions. And factoring is going to be super helpful. So if you've not watched the factoring review and you think you need to, take a second, do that, because we are going to rely a lot on factoring with the work we do. Um, we're going to go through multiplying, and then I'm going to do my best to make it so we can go through dividing. And so um, kind of hang tight, write down some notes on multiplying. And then the work we use in multiplying is definitely going to help us with dividing. So there are some steps for multiplying rational expressions. The first is we are going to rely heavily on our ability to factor. We're going to factor any polynomial that we see. And again, if you're struggling with factoring, leverage some Google if that is helpful to you or um, find a way to help yourself get it factored. The next thing we're going to do after we get everything factored is we are going to write our fraction, our two fractions that we're multiplying, we're going to write them as one giant fraction. And then once we've done that, then it's a lot like the simplifying work we did, and we are going just we are going to cancel anything we can. We can only cancel things that are multiplying, though, so we got to be super careful that we don't get cross out happy, because that would be bad news. So, just really quickly, let's talk about these two examples at the bottom. Oops, at the bottom here. Um, first of all, at the top one, we are going to skip that example. We aren't going to work through that as going to be similar. And actually, we can jump ahead real quick. We are also going to skip this one on the bottom here. So we are just going to look at one example of each type, which is super nice, kind of shorten up this video and give you one solid example to look at. So first of all, we are going to start off by factoring every polynomial we see in this example that we're starting with. So this example right here, we're going to start by factoring as much as we can. x plus 3 does not need to be factored, and x minus 1 does not need to be factored. The two parts that need to be factored live in the second fraction. So if I organize my thinking with the x, I get minus 1 and minus 1, and I get 3 and 2, both positive. Okay, so again, kind of zooming through the factoring, but hopefully you are doing okay with it. Make sure you ask if something does feel unclear. Now I'm going to rewrite all of my fractions, complete with the factored part showing. Whoa, except for I gotta put them in the right spot. Let's try that again. We've got an x minus one and an x minus one. And the x plus three and the x plus two goes in the denominator. So my bad on that, sorry about that. Good thing for erasing. Once we get everything factored, the next step is very, very high tech. And the next step says, write as one fraction. So here's how what I do to write as one fraction. I just take my pencil and I just connect them. So now they are just one epic fraction with one numerator and one denominator. Then it says cancel if possible. So I am looking for what I can cancel based in each set of parentheses. So in these parentheses that I'm looking at, I see that I've got x plus 3 right here. And it's not in parentheses, but it is its own little package. And then x plus 3 down here. And I say, oh, look, they cancel. Let me cross them out. And then I see x minus 1 and x minus 1. And I see, oh, look, they cancel. Let me cross them out. After that, all that's left in the top is x minus 1. And that has no friends to cross out with down below. In the same sense that x plus 2 has nothing it can cross out with from up above. At this point, we stop. We do not cross out the x's because they are not cross outable because the top one has a minus 1 attached and the bottom one has a plus 2 attached. Remember, we can only cross out packages or factors. 
And when I say factors, I mean we can only cross out things that are um, in parentheses as a whole group, right? So we leave this here and we say this is good, yay math. Dividing works similarly. So I'm going to try and scroll up and do some stuff with dividing. Let's see if everything stays in its home where it's supposed to. So far, so good. Dividing. Okay, when I talk about dividing, you are going to hear me say K, F, C. And all that means is keep, flip, change. It's kind of a, a way of tracking what we need to do in order to divide these fractions. Keep, flip, change is our process for how to rewrite as multiplication. If you think back to multiplying, or excuse me, to dividing fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So here's how we're gonna do that. We are going to keep the first fraction exactly the way it looks. We're not going to change it, we're not going to touch it, we are just going to admire it and rewrite it. And then, we are going to flip the second fraction. Keep the first, flip the second fraction. Now flip is just a fancy way of saying we want the reciprocal. Once we've set up our fractions kind of with one kept the same and one flipped upside down, then we can change it to multiply. After we change it to multiply, then we do the multiplication steps. Okay, so let's look at an example here. We're just gonna do the top one. Remember we are crossing off the bottom. So I'm gonna do some scrolling, get this up a little bit higher so we can see it a little better. Okay, KFC, keep, flip, change. So when I say keep, I mean we're gonna keep the first one exactly the same. There's the K in KFC. Then it says flip. And then it says change to multiply. Okay, so once we do that, then we dive into the multiplying steps. And if you remember the multiplying steps, the very first step in multiplying was factor. So let's get this factored. Multiply to negative 15, add to negative 2. Multiply to negative 8, add to negative 2. And here's what we've got. We've got... The first fraction, again, nothing needed to be factored, but in the second fraction, my new top, I'm going to write as x minus 5 and x plus 3, and my new bottom, I'm going to write as x minus 4 and x plus 2. Okay, after we've gotten everything factored, then we're going to use our math magic and our fraction power to put them as one cute common fraction. And then we're looking to cancel. Remember, we can only cancel in groups. So this entire parentheses of x minus 5 crosses out this entire x minus 5 right here. Same thing with x minus 4 and x minus 4. And then we are left with our final answer of x plus 3 over x plus 2. So lots going on, but hopefully all very manageable steps. If you need to, go back and rewrite or... Uh, Rewatch this as you write stuff down or make extra notes or draw arrows or things like that. And always, always, always be in touch if there's anything you need.